And so no matter the amount of uh, 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 dialogue, no matter the amount of going to take on our communities and talking to them, they are helpless in this situation because they have not attacked anybody. Whether you are the most peaceful community, I can count so many communities that were attacked. They have never had any quarrel with any local felony. The communities that were attacked in the local government, they, 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 they were just taken aback. They have never had any problem with the local felonies. 22 communities were attacked in Jamal local government after the Ninte attacked. 22 communities. And what is very, very crucial in this matter is wherever these communities are attacked, like my colleague there in the studio has said, wherever these communities are attacked, then they ferry in the occupying forces, the occupying people to come and occupy the Fulanis that you never know, you have never seen them. They, they are now coming to occupy the place. They take over the place. They begin their building. They chase the natives. And as I'm talking now, those that do the attack are not the local Fulanis that we know. I grew up knowing our local Fulanis as friends. We even stayed in the same house. We go to school together. But the ones that come to do the attack only use the pretext of having a, 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 a crisis or a disagreement with a local felony. And then they come in the night and do the attack and they recede back to a nearby bush. As I'm talking now, behind uh, Pasakori, after Kagoro, if you are going to uh, Gidamoya, where the initial crisis took place, the attackers are still there in those hills. And the security people know about them. And I want to tell here that we are beginning to suspect that the, the, the Boko Haram terrorists that are living for no state are the ones that are gathering in those places. It's a very dangerous thing. And we have heard rumors of helicopters, a helicopter that always comes in the night and supplies some things in the deep of the night, would stay there for about an hour and go back. Mm -hmm. And then when these attacks are going on, the security people will tell you they have not had received orders to go and attack them. A particular instance that I want to cite here. There is this town called Sonji in Kagoro. They were being attacked. And the youth came out with their little dem guns and machetes, and they saw the attackers advancing with their women and children. And they said, we the youth, we are ready to sacrifice. We'll go in and chase them. The military blocked them. And then seized their, 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 their weapons of defense. And this is self-defense. This is survival. So what do we do? So if the government has the will, if the sponsors of this genocide will bear Nigeria, have Nigeria a future, then they should call them to order. Because what is going on is more than reach the eye. It's more than the narratives that we're hearing. It's more than cattle rustling that we've been hearing about. It's not. It is pure genocide, pure ethno-religious cleansing, pure land occupation, pure a, 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 a capture of, 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 of territory. And we as minorities in this region, in the north, the United Nations Charter guarantees us our rights. Our land is our inheritance. This is our ancestral land. We have nowhere to go to. When you talk about the Fulani man, that is his cattle, that is his inheritance, that is his life. He comes from another country. We also, now do we begin to go and, and, and kill people in Kano? because we are looking for land to farm. Even the grazing reserve that they are talking about today, we have been opposing it because we know it is a subtle attempt by government to take over land through legislature and give it to those same people and then now make us class citizens or completely assimilate us or completely wipe out our way of life. Because when these grazing reserves are established, tomorrow, you will find out that these places that have been taken over by government uh, 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 legislature, by government law, and given to some people that are doing purely their business, they, they will set up a community, and then they will start their schools. They will not just do grazing there. They will begin to build their businesses, other businesses. They will begin to farm and take over the communities. As I am talking today, let me tell you something. There is a grazing reserve that was in tax service in the early 90s in uh, 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 our local government, my, my local government, Zangon Kataf, is called Laduga. It was established basically for a grazing reserve. What was a grazing reserve? It's to graze 
you are cattle. But as I'm talking today, that Laduga, which had an initial landmark of 30,000 hectares, has been increased without anybody knowing to 70,000 hectares. And that land is taken over from the farmers without any, uh, any compensation. And as today, as I'm talking, they are building mega structures in that place. It's no longer a grazing reserve. Big hospitals, big schools, road networks, better than what we find in the natives. And that is oppression. That is marginalization. That is subjugation. Let me tell you another thing. Southern Kaduna Senatorial District, out of the three senatorial districts that we have, many people may not know this, out of the over 50, 50 plus federal institutions that are in Kaduna State, none, none is in Southern Kaduna. The only institutions that we had were the ones that were established by the missionaries, the schools that gave us education. I went to LEA Primary School. That is why I can talk to you today. That is why I can talk to Nigerians. But today, back home, my younger ones don't have a school to go to because those schools were taken over and by, from the missionaries and bastardized and thrown away and today we are not given anything. Even the federal universities that were established by good luck Jonathan, the former president, the 12 federal universities, we have ABU in the northern part, we have the college, uh, federal protecting in the northern part, we have the federal college of education in the northern part, college of agri in the northern part, school of Abri 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 uh, aviation in the northern part, uh, school of uh, uh, Leather Technology in the Northern, and all those institutions. But they will not have the capacity to allow that school, even against our plea, sending our chiefs to go and plead, let this federal university go to the southern part, because we don't have even one institution, none. And the people have just been struggling with their famine, and yet sleep is not allowed. The only thing that we are left it, with is this land. And this land is being taken away from us again. And people are given these narratives and are associated with these narratives that it is clash. Let me tell you the, 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 the demonstration, the so-called demonstration they talk about that took place before the Christmas time. That demonstration was not violent. That demonstration took place because the incessant killings, village after village, village after village and the people over the time have gone into numbers mostly women and children and the old people and the sick who cannot run because this attack took place in the night had gone on unstopped and the women were tired of losing their children losing their husbands the men were tired of losing their families and they said look let us organize a peaceful protest so that the governor the authorities in the state may listen the authorities of the federal listen may listen after all this is a constitutional provision All right. under the fundamental objectives and directive principles of state happy. policy. The basic essence of government, a democratic government, a constitutional government that we have, is the security and right. well-being of our people. Hold the thought for us. But One I moment. feel One so moment. disheartened, so frustrated. All right, so so sad on that a governor like Governor Erufai okay. will sit in there and say that if anybody calls for self-defense, he is making a head speech. It's a constitutional uh, All right, provision hold on, again. Hold on, you've made that point. Under the not the right point. guaranteed in the constitution. Honorable Asaki. Defense is a guaranteed right. Please, hold on, hold on. Now, you talked about the various issues. I mean, by the way, you have raised very, very serious allegations in saying that two times you mentioned the word sponsors of this crisis. Uh, that's on one hand. On the other hand, you talked about uh, that even as we speak, there are villages and areas where the people have been sacked and that the herdsmen are there. Let's have you on good authority because also this is good information for the security operatives. We expect them to swing into action with this sheer level of information that is coming out on national and international media. No, now, uh, in, in, in trying to just forge ahead and please quickly, Tell us if you have said at your level, you have tried variously to address this issue. So how do we forge ahead? How do we see a stop to the headsman menace? I think this question should be thrown to the people that are in position of authority because we have done as community leaders, as law-abiding citizens, have been doing our very best. But he 
that has aspired into leadership position in any capacity. There are in instruments of authority that are given, whether you are a lawmaker, whether you are a chairman of a local government, whether you are a governor or a president, there are instruments of authority that are given to you by the Constitution, and you have been empowered to use those instruments to safeguard people's lives and ensure a peaceful coexistence. We have been doing our thing. Our pastors have been preaching peace in the churches, and our community leaders, our traditional rulers, and even a social uh, 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 cultural organization like the one I belong to, we sit out our people and we preach peace. We preach communal harmony. But how can you help it, like I've said earlier? When you have done all this, and in the night, when you are not expecting, when you are not suspecting, and then somebody comes in, he has not told you a sin, so that you can even say, I'm sorry. And then he comes in, fires a gun, and the women are running, and they begin to hack down. The difference between a child and a, an old person is not known. They hack down anything that is alive and burn the grain reserves of these farmers. As I'm talking now, the number of IDPs we have in Southern Kaduna, the number of IDPs we have in the plateau, the number of IDPs we have all over these areas that we have had attacks in Benue and the rest, the number of IDPs is overwhelming. But the difference is that in our areas, there is this safe pride that you don't go and stay in an IDP. So if a community is attacked today, they move to the next community and stay with them. And you can see a man that ordinarily has three children to cater with, now has 27 families to cater for. And then the, 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 the food supply is not there. And only these non-governmental organizations is coming with food aids. As I'm talking today, how many uh, 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 gov gov government agencies have taken food aids to our people that have been displaced in their land. And you say I made allegation. No, it is not allegation. When I talk about sponsors, there is nobody that will carry AK-47, might have a force like the one that will be doing this level of destruction, and it's not sponsored. There must be somebody behind it. Even if you are contesting for a, 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 to, to, to be the, the, the head of a small group, there must be a sponsor. So there are sponsors of this. And like I said, the hatsmen, that the so-called hatsmen, but they are terrorists. All right, thank terrorists you. that have been, that, 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 that are coming to attack our place, and, and they are still there in the bushes. All right, thank you very much, Honorable Jonathan Asake. We leave it at that, and I appreciate you for your time this morning and having joined us from our Abuja studio. We understand the passion around uh, that subject matter for you, of course, knowing uh, what you say uh, you have seen happen in your community and those around you. Thank you so much, Honorable Jonathan Asake, former member of the House of Representatives, as well as the Director of Research and Strategy, Southern Kaduna Indigenous Progressive Forum for joining us uh, from Abuja Studios.